Hi everybody, my name is Paola and I'm a quality engineer on RGI software. Today we have an overview about the experiment called Cause Engineering. So let's pass through the agenda for today's presentation. First of all, we'll see the definition of Cause Engineering. What is Cause Engineering? Then we'll see the benefits. Why is important to use uh, cause engineering on our products and our, on our systems and applications. Then uh, we'll see how to apply cause engineering on a process, on our, on our projects and systems. And then you will have a quickly overview on the Netflix history with cause engineering. So what is cause engineering? Chaos engineering is a discipline that tests hypotheses through controlled experimentation and analyzes the results in order to make system more stable. We use cause engineering to inject faults into the system and improve its response and resilience. Use cause, en cause engineering, we can anticipate situations that we cannot prevent from happening in real life. Life network prob like network problems, a blackout on, on the center data, event that seems to be here and we don't predict on the, on the daily basis tests, but are not impossible to happen. And then we can prepare a system or application in order to remain stable when these events happen and give the best response to the user if the impact can, can't be avoided. Or, uh, that means that if the, uh, if the impact uh, on the system in production is something that we, can't, we cannot avoid, like uh, uh, a network problem, for example, we need to think about the best response for the user so uh, we can uh, we can decrease we, we need to think in decrease the impact to the user uh, impact on the user uh, when these kind of situations happen so we guarantee greater real reliability for our project uh, greater confidence on our project so it's better to intentionally inject cows into our system in a controlled environment than being caught unprepared in a real situation. That's right. So, why cows worth it? Why every day more and more companies are taking cows engineering to their routine? So, uh, let's see some of the benefits of cows engineering uh, cause engineer has a lot have a lot of good things that can bring to to the project to the the systems, but here we're gonna see just a few of of these benefits. Uh, for example, productivity and observability. Uh, cause engineering leads us to proactively identify failures. We face poss uh, possible problems that can happen in production before they happen, and we can be prepared. Also, we need to have good monitor monitoring process during and after the experiment, so this leads us to improve the observ observability of the system. Then we have practice contingency and incident response plans. Uh, that means that by simulating incidents with cause engineering, we can check how our system behaves in the face of some events that would be unexpected in the real world. And then we can create contingency plans for events beyond our control. Then uh, we can understand the effects of failures in the real world. Uh, we may have knowledge and, and experience uh, with some failure situations that have already been experienced or uh, there are uh, there are no, but with cause engineering we can predict and hypothesize failures failures that haven't been taken into account before, failures that we 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 don't take in account in the uh, in regular situations. So let's see the process of chaos engineering. How to break things? Chaos engineering uh, is based on uh, a full circle, full cycle of uh, of steps. 
So first of all, we have this steady state. Then we formulate the hypothesis. Then we run the experiment. And then we verify the experiment and improve our system and improve the steady state. Uh, so uh, the first step uh, is the steady state of your system. So we need to determine the steady state of your system before start starting all the experiments and starting all the process. Uh, we need to determine to determine how the system normally behaves in normal situations. So we define metrics. We define metrics on system attributes, several attributes, user experiences, and uh, we have uh, these metrics. In, we have these metrics in hands uh, with these uh, conditions, these normal conditions of the system. And then uh, we have the steady state based on these metrics. So this steady state helps us to validate that the system has returned to its normal state after the experiments. Uh, the steady state is very important because after we run the experiments, we can be sure that the system has returned to its normal state, that it has returned to, this, to, its, uh, to its safe state. Then, uh, then after we have the, the steady state, we need to formulate the hypothesis. They are defined by thinking about different levels of complexity, possibility and frequency, including thinking about real world events. Real world events uh, are the events that can be happening on daily basis, events that is not important possible to happen, such as power outage, database slowdowns, connection problems. So uh, basically, and a hypothesis is the question, what if? So when we, uh, we are going to formulate the hypothesis, uh, we need to sit down all the teams together because uh, the cause engineering does not involve only one team. Uh, it involves all the uh, uh, a lot of teams to work together, such as the QA team, uh, the DevOps team, the develop teams, the business teams. So all the teams need to work together, and then uh, we'll make a brainstorm to formulate the hypothesis. And the hypothesis uh, can be things such as, oh, what if the AWS on A becomes uh, unavailable? What if the volume of access increases? What if the entire data, data center goes down? What if a request uh, is interrupted while the user is paying online? What if the servers go offline and the only person with access is unavailable? So uh, uh, we can see here that the hypothesis is not only uh, hardware or connection uh, or architecture things. Uh, we can formulate a hypothesis thinking on thinking on the team, uh, for example, thinking, oh, uh, uh, what if the uh, what if uh, uh, we have just one person with with the permission for these critical systems? What if uh, we have uh, just one team take care of uh, of this data center and? Uh, what what will happen if the data center goes down and all the teams is unavailable so uh, else uh, uh, we can think about all these questions and we can open our mind uh, to all the possibilities that can happen then uh, after having defined all these hypotheses we need to reflect this hypothesis in a safe and controlled way in our system or application. It's very important to have this in mind that we need to run the experiments in a controlled environment. So uh, the team can, uh, the team are able to, mon uh, uh, to monitoring the, the experiment to, and to have a, a quick response in case of something goes bad. So, uh, as the name said, uh, we are running experiments of cows engineering. We are injecting cows in the system. So 
we need uh, an safe, a safe environment to run this. And the experiments can often start in a smaller parts of the system application and increase the rate, the blast radius as the company gains more maturity with cause engineering. What is blast radius? Blast radius is the measure of the potential impact of the system failures. So uh, uh, what we're saying here is that we need to start the, the experiments uh, with uh, small impacts, small impact potentials on our system. On our system, so with the time, as we are gaining more maturity with the, with uh, this with cause engineering, uh, we can increase uh, the impact area of the system of our application, and we are increasing the blast radius of the of the application of the project. Other many articles and cases uh, talk about the ideal experiments uh, experiments uh, in production environments. Uh, so a lot of companies uh, is running these experiments in production environments, and uh, of course, and and a uh, and a uh, uh, schedule time and a uh, 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 schedule uh, the uh, time window and. Uh, they, they are safe to run this in production. But for teams that are starting with cause engineering, the best choice is to start with testing and homologation environments. Uh, but of course, trying to mirror as much as possible the production conditions. So it's very important that uh, the environments that we are running, the experiments, the testing or homologation environments, uh, this environment needs to be a mirror of the production environment. So we can be sure that we are running experiments uh, based on production conditions and uh, and we don't need to run uh, the experiments in production environments if we have a testing environment that reflects the entire production conditions. So, uh, we can run manually these experiments. We can manually uh, access, uh, for example, uh, access our environment and uh, queue the container, for example, or we can manually uh, close the connection. We can manually uh, cut the power, for example, uh, but we can use tools uh, to automate and orchestrate the experiments. Uh, here I will talk uh, about some of these tools, some tools that we have on the market, and uh, all these tools is open, is open source, so uh, they are available uh, on GitLab and, or in the tools site, in the tools page. So uh, we can, uh, it's, it's easier to, uh, to study, it's easier to understand these tools because uh, is open source, so uh, is available for us. Uh, the first tool is Cows Monkey. Cows Monkey uh, is a tool that is a part of a project called Simeon Army that was created by Netflix. Uh, Cows Monkey randomly disables instances and services, testing the fault tolerance in a cloud, and uh, is. Uh, currently use it on uh, AWS cloud. Uh, we have Pumba. Pumba is a command line tool for Docker containers. Uh, this tool can crash your containers, emulate network failures, and also, and also stress testing containers resources. And uh, is also for clouds, uh, for uh, cloud applications. Then we have Toxiproxy. Uh, Toxiproxy uh, was a, a, a tool created by the Shopify team and, and it's a framework that simulates network conditions uh, on testing on uh, testing environments, CI, CG and homologation uh, environments. And it also supports uh, randomized calls and supports customization of the experiments. Then we have Cause Mesh. Uh, Cows Mesh is the most completed uh, cause solution of these of these tools, 
uh, and it's a solution for Kubernetes applications with an operation uh, operator that injects a lot of failures and objects into the environments, such as network loss, containers, queues, and I also have a dashboard where you can monitor in the experiments. Uh, then we have KubeMonkey. KubeMonkey is basically uh, the same implementation of CosMonkey, but for Kubernetes, only for Kubernetes. And then we have Litmus. Litmus uh, is also a good, a good tool. It's a complete tool, uh, and it's easy to use for for those who are starting with cause engineering. And it's a tool uh, where you can create, manage, and monitor cause experiments uh, on the cloud. And I also have a, a good dashboard, an easy, an easy going dashboard to uh, monitor, monitoring your experiments. And there we have React Chaos. Uh, React Chaos is uh, a tool that injects chaos on React applications. So uh, we can also uh, run experiments on front end, not only on architecture, uh, architecture layer or uh, and back end, but we can also run experiments on front end using React Chaos. Uh, and this uh, is a component uh, that, it, that helps to inject failures on your UI components. So uh, you can see how uh, your UI components uh, will be, uh, uh, how your UI components will respond to these failures. So uh, it's, uh, uh, it's all tools that are using, uh, are used now for those companies who are, uh, who are working with cause engineering uh, and the most tools, as I said, uh, this is open source. We have uh, on the market uh, uh, tools there. It's not open source, but we have a lot of options. Depends on the on the company. or depends on your solution and what you are uh, uh, what you are using on your application. Um, but uh, the main thing is the, the creativity in the way to inject the flows. Hypotheses can be tested in nearly more true methods like controlling containers in Docker or just unplugging, uh, unplugging a machine. Regardless the means used to carry out the experiments, the important thing is prior planning and readiness teams through the process. So uh, the most important thing uh, is uh, the planning of these experiments. Is when you are uh, planning your hypothesis, uh, when you are planning uh, uh, the schedule for the experiments, when you are planning the resources, resources, uh, and the agenda for the experiments, and you are planning, uh, especially uh, the contingency, the contingency plans for the experiments, and of course uh, the teams must be ready to respond uh, for these failures to respond. Uh, to uh, the things that can happen on the system when you are applying the cause experiment. So uh, the, all the teams must be uh, must be prepared and uh, synchronized uh, between each other to respond uh, the the experiments and then analyze the experiments. So uh, speaking in analyze, uh, we have the the last part that is analyzing the results and learn. So here we uh, will validate or not the hypothesis that we have created before. So after the experiments, the team responsible for the execution describes what happened, whether it had impact or not, and what impacts were on the system and application. So after analyzing all this information, the team can learn from the problem and think of ways to prevent the same from happen if the failures occur in the real world. So, uh, in addition to think of ways to minimize impact or address failures when the problem is something that cannot be avoided in cases of uh, power failure, uh, con connection failure, hardware problems, team availability, availability, the ultimate goal is for the team to come out with a list of actions to take. So, uh, uh, so the, the, the goal here is 
uh, to create a list of actions uh, of things to, of actions and and topics to improve on your system and if there's something that you cannot be avoided you can think uh, in ways to minimize the impact to the user when this uh, when this failure occurs on your system. So uh, we have now a quickly uh, overview about the Netflix history with cause engineering. But the Netflix was the pioneer on cause engineering. Uh, they have uh, a lot of documentation about this process, about the cause engineering, uh, the, about how they created uh, this discipline inside the Netflix uh, team. So they started in uh, 2010, the Netflix engineering tools team created Cows Monkey. Uh, they created Cows Monkey and uh, with Cows Monkey they created all the Simeon Army uh, projects. So uh, created uh, Cows Monkey was created in response to Netflix move from physical structure to cloud infrastructure provided by Amazon Web Services and the need to be sure that a loss of Amazon instances wouldn't affect the Netflix streaming experience because we know that <laughs> uh, uh, the success of Netflix and uh, is the streaming quality and uh, they of course they don't have that uh, that we they don't want uh, that we have any loss on the streaming if they have some problem on the instances or on the application. So in 2012, Netflix opened the code of Cosmonkey on GitHub. And then in 2014, Dan Woods from Netflix shared with the engineering community the new term for the failure injecting injection testing, the cause engineering. So uh, uh, earlier, Netflix team uh, called all these uh, experiments, they call it as failure injection testing. They doesn't call it as cause engineering. But uh, in, in 2014, Dan Woods, uh, they uh, uh, share with all the engineering community on Twitter and on the, with other uh, co-workers and, and other colleagues to, in other companies and they created this name Cause Engineer. So uh, is the same name that we're using today and the, all the companies uh, adopted since then. Uh, so as I say, Netflix have, have uh, a lot of documentation about uh, Cause Engineering on his, uh, his blog. Uh, so you can uh, know more, you can read more about this on the Netflix tech blog and they have a full, a full page and they have uh, a lot of contents about cons engineering there. Okay. So thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk with you about this subject and uh, I hope uh, to bring you more of this subject soon. Okay. Bye bye.